Blessings, beloveds. Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Uh, the lighting is a bit different because it's uh, almost dark outside, but anyway, uh, hopefully it's good enough to see what I need you to see. All right, so just, just a couple of things before I introduce what I'm going to talk about today, uh, which is related to medieval astrology. Um, I studied medieval astrology many, many years ago with Bernadette Brady, who is a renowned uh, astrologer from Australia, from Adelaide actually, uh, who now lives in the UK and has been there for quite some time. She is the owner of Astro Lobos, which is her school of astrology. Anyway, many years ago, I uh, studied um, a medieval course with her, which I found to be um, fantastic in a nutshell. And um, I learned a lot through that course. And as a result, through the years, I've been working with some of the principles uh, and some of the techniques relating to medieval astrology. Medieval astrology is very different to um, Western uh, modern day astrology um, for many different reasons, but one very simple one is that um, uh, modern Western astrology is has an incredibly um, large psychological component to it. Nothing wrong with that. It's fantastic for what it does. It's, it's very useful, actually. Um, but medieval astrology is uh, not really psychological, psychologically based and is very black and white in its views and, and uh, assessments as well. Having said all of that, there are some techniques in medieval astrology which connect to Hellenistic astrology, essentially, um, which I feel are uh, very, very useful and um, work and are powerful. And the reason I'm introducing this to you today is because I actually use some of these techniques when I do a reading for a person, and I have been doing that for many, many years. I studied this particular course 14 years ago, but I've been doing astrology for 25 years now, so quite a long time. Um, okay, so the... The method that I want to bring in and introduce today, and remember this is an introduction, so I'm not here to teach this technique, um, simply because that would take hours. However, I want to introduce it um, for people who may wish to explore this further themselves, um, and also so that you, you guys know that this is one of the techniques that I use in my work when I do chart readings as well. So when, when somebody is working with astrological um, predictive techniques, what, what you're essentially doing is you, you're working with layers, okay? So if you're working with the Fedaria period, Fedaria system, which I'll explain to you in a minute what that is and I'll show you what it looks like as well. Um, when you work with that, you, you, well, I don't work with that alone, you know? So I will look at the Fedaria period for a person I will look at their secondary progressions. I will look at their transits. I'll look at their secondary progress moon. Um, and I may look at some other things as well. It just depends if there's, if there's enough, <laughs> well and truly enough in that, which there usually is. There's, there's you know, not, not, no need to go much further because it, it can just get very overwhelming. But astrology does have many layers, um, both in natal chart interpretation, delineation, and in predictive work as well. But essentially what happens is when a person is going through a major life cycle, um, which is representing a very specific theme in their life, and it's, you know, you could say life-changing, um, you, you will see it in, in the, you'll, you'll see traces of it through the Fedaria period, through secondary progressions, through transits, because what happens is a planet or two planets will just get triggered off. They'll get hit off and that will start the motion of that theme relating to um, that person's life at that particular point, at the stage that they're in in life. So um, Fedaria periods is an old system that's been around for a very long time. I can't quite remember how long, but it's a long time. Um, and it uses the, um, the traditional planets. So the what are considered to be the modern planets, which is Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and let's throw in Chiron, um, are not used in the system, but that's okay. It doesn't mean that the system is not powerful or effective because it excludes those planets. Simply when the system was created, those planets had not been discovered. They were not in our consciousness. 
So what happens is in, in medieval astrology or Hellenistic astrology, the, um, the principle uh, of day birth and night birth is super, super significant and it, it means a lot of different things. Um, you know, if, if you're a day birth, certain planets work better in the uh, top part of the chart or if you're a night birth, certain planets work better in the lower half of the chart. There's, there's a lot of different rules. But the concept of day and night is really, really important and it connects to the planets as well. Some planets are, are nocturnal, some planets are diurnal, etc. Most obvious, you know, the sun is always a diurnal planet um, and the moon is a nocturnal uh, planet or energy. So what happens in this particular system called Fidario, uh, spelled F-I-R-D-A-R-I-A, there are a couple of systems or a few different systems in terms of um, deriving from different authors through through the through the years, right? In in history, <laughs> um, and uh, the system that I use uh, places the the astrological moons north nodes towards the end of life. I'll show you what this looks like in a minute. And um, there are other systems that place the moons nodes in the middle of life, so in, in our forties when we're forty. That's very, very significant because people use um, different systems and, you know, I can't tell you which one to use. I can tell you which one I use and which what I find works, which is the nodes towards the later period of life being at 70 years of age, for instance. Um, if you're a night birth, this moon for Dario period starts with the moon. The first nine years of life are actually ruled by the moon. And um, if you're a day birth, the first 10 years are ruled by the sun. And the order of the planets, if you're, if you're a moon birth, you'll start with the moon first nine years and then you'll go into a Saturn for Daria period. And if you're a day birth, you start with the sun and then I think it goes to Venus. I'll show you what that looks like now. I'm not using anyone's chart in particular for this example. In fact, I've just, um, just done an example of... Um, well, I'll show you. So I'll share my screen. Um, Okay, so I will show you, here's a day birth, okay? This is what a day birth for Daria um, system looks like. Trying to adjust that, okay. All right, so as you can see here, I've just chosen it for the 5th of May, 2018. So somebody would have been born, you know, a couple of days ago <clears throat> at around about 10.39 a.m., let's say. So if they were born on this day and uh, this month and this year and this time, this is their Fidario period. So it starts at from the time we're born and it takes us through right up until age 93 uh, with the day birth. So as I said, if you're born during the day, then you start with the sun as being the first primary uh, the Daria period that you experience. Now, what you can see here is that you can see the sun has these sub-periods which change every you know year and a half or thereabouts. So when the person was born, they were in a sun for Daria period, and when they were 1.4 years of age, they went into a sun sub-Venus period for Daria. Now, a couple of things here. First of all, when, you, when you're assessing a Fedaria period, you always go back, refer back to the person's natal chart in that you assess the, the condition of the sun in the person's birth chart. Is their sun in a good house in terms of, um, there's no good or bad house. That's, that's language that I don't even like using. But planets do better in certain signs and um, struggle in certain signs. Let's just say that. So when, you, when you're assessing this person's Fedaria period, you will look at the sun in their natal chart, you will look at the sign it's in, you will look at the house it's in, you will look at the aspects to it, and so forth. And that will give you um, your baseline, it will give you the, the sense of how this solar sun uh, Fedaria period will be for the first 10 years of life. And when you're assessing the, the sub-period, but, okay, let me just backtrack, just go back a minute. The Fedaria period is, is ruled by the main ruler, which in looking at this example, we're talking about the sun, okay? 
So the sun is the Fedaria period, which describes the matter, matter of life for those first 10 years, the overall matter, which is the, the, the essence, you know, of that person's life, really. Um, and the sub-period is said to describe the form, okay? So form is physicality, really, isn't it? So when you're looking at this Fedaria period, you're looking at, as I said, you've, you've assessed the condition of the natal sun in the horoscope chart, and then when you're looking at the sub-periods, um, you're assessing the, the sub-period uh, planetary ruler as well. So you'd look at the sun, you'd look at Venus. What's, what's the condition of sun and Venus in this person's birth chart? That's going to tell you a lot about how this uh, sun-Venus Fedaria period is going to play out. So, you know, I mean, very, very broadly and very simply put, when someone's born during the day and they have uh, the first 10 years ruled by the sun, it's all about, you know, the development of personality and ego and self-expression. It's the solar energy, the solar life force, the, the primal sort of life force in the person. So depending on where their sun is in their birth chart, you know, that's going to tell you a lot about what they experience in the first 10 years of life. And then you're delineating the sub-periods which tell you uh, further uh, aspects of what's going to happen um, every one point for one and a half years, okay, as that person goes through their solar fedaria. Then at the age of 10, for example, they go into a Venus fedaria period. So <clears throat> a Venus fedaria period and even a solar generally, you know, pretty good periods and, and Mercury uh, and the Moon and Jupiter, uh, all, all of them are actually quite good, but it's always going to depend on the condition of this person's natal planets in their birth chart. Saturn seems to be the most difficult uh, for Daria period um, for obvious reasons, really. And Saturn Mars for Daria, uh, Saturn for Daria period, sub Mars period um, is really said to be, you know, uh, and proven to be one of the most challenging sort of times in life, you could say. Um, there's reasons for that, but obviously I'm not, as I said, I'm not, I'm not here to teach this system to delineate it, you know, from, you know, step A to step Z, because that will take hours. But I just wanted to introduce this to you guys so that you can explore it for yourselves if you're interested. And just to know that this is a method that I use in my work as well when I'm doing readings for people. Okay, so that's a um, day birth. And as you can see here, the nodes that I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the nodal axis, these are the moon's nodes that the person experiences at the age of 70. This is a system I use. There is another system where the nodes are put here to the age of 40, okay? It's a different system. I'm not going to tell you which one's right or wrong. You need to discover that for yourself. I personally use this system with the nodes in the later part of life. Um, Okay, now I'm going to show you a uh, night one, just to show you the difference, because the, the order of the planets is very different, okay? Oops, sorry, I brought up the same one. I need to go to night. Okay, so here's a night birth. So this person was born, I've just chosen the same day, just to keep it simple. Uh, this person was born at 10 p.m. at night, so they start with the moon for Daria period, okay? The first nine years of life, are ruled by the moon. You can see that here, that, that's, that's birth, zero, zero point zero, that's birth, okay? And then it doesn't change over to Saturn until the person is nine years old. That means that the first nine years of life are ruled by the moon. Again, same principle. You need to assess the moon in the person's birth chart. What house is it in? Um, what sign is it in? What aspects does it have? What houses does the moon rule? And one other thing I forgot to mention as well, when you're looking at the sub-periods, so say for example, we were looking at the moon sub certain period for the person, you would uh, not only look at the condition of natal moon and natal Saturn in their birth chart, but you'd also look at what houses uh, the moon and Saturn rule in the person's chart because they are going to be linked into whatever is going on at that person's, in that person's life at that particular time. So at nine years of age, they move into a certain period. So that means teens for night people. <laughs> Your teens is ruled by Saturn, and I'm a night birth, and yeah, that I can I can certainly say that's um, 
teens was really a quite a tough period for me um, for a lot of different reasons. So that's 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 very accurate for me. As I said, Saturn is the, seems to be the most difficult period out of all, um, just for, just because of the nature of Saturn and all things it represents. Um, and you know, Saturn's not a nice thing to go through when you're a teenager. You know, because imagine the diff the opposite to this is to have Venus there, right? <laughs> So when you're a teenager, you know, the, the, a lot of the, the things that, that teenagers need to experience and feel is connection, popularity, sharing, uh, you know, um, giving, connecting, um, appreciation, you know, love relationships as much as you can, you know, when you're a teenager. But a lot of teenagers have, you know, they have their first love, you know, when they're uh, teenagers. So that's if you're born during the day, then you have the Venus, you know, through your teens. Then I think that's much, much nicer. If you're born at night, you've got Saturn through your teens and that's going to tell you a lot. So, you know, for instance, when you're 12, 12 years of age, if you're born at night, you're going through a Saturn Mars for Daria. That's not nice at all. That's a very tough time to go through. And that explains a lot for a lot of people. Um, and anyway, as you can see, at the age of um, 20, if you're a night birth, you go into a Jupiter period, which is me. I was born at night. So this, this cycle, this, this very specific structure of these uh, Fedoria periods is exactly as mine is because I'm not. So it's the same for all night births and the same for all day births, okay? So when I was 20, for instance, and I went into my Jupiter Fedoria, I... Um, I'll just stop sharing my screen now. I uh, got very, very um, enthusiastic, inspired, excited, um, passionate, driven, uh, you know, all, all these different experiences came up with astrology. So I read my first astrology book when I was 12 years old, um, which was a book on Aries. And I, I never stopped reading astrology ever since, you know. Uh, but when I was 20, I decided that I wanted to, to, I wanted to formally study this wisdom. I wanted to really learn it and understand it. I wanted to, to do something with it. I, I felt a calling with it. I didn't know that I was going to necessarily become a professional astrologer and teach and do readings. I, I just knew that I had to learn it. And the, the truth is this, that when I, did when, I, <laughs> when I went and first studied it, my, my first day there, I felt like, I was, I felt like my, my soul was at home. You know, that's what, just on my first day, I, I did a two-year course, you know, at the very beginning. Um, and astrology is not something you ever stop learning or studying. It's a, it's a lifelong journey. Um, but when I was 20 and I went into my Jupiter Daria, that, that signifies um, that 10-year period for me. Um, is it 10 years? Let me just, sorry, I don't want to give you wrong information. So I just want to make sure. Um, not that one. Yes, it is a 10 year period. I was correct. Okay, so yeah, and um, for me, my Jupiter is in Sagittarius in, in my birth chart. So it's in rulership. It's a very, very well placed Jupiter. Uh, it's got a lot of great things about it. But, um, you know, Jupiter rules ninth house stuff, you know, Sagittarius stuff, wisdom, truth seeking. Uh, high learning, the world of symbols, astrology, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's all Sagittarius stuff, Jupiter stuff. Um, and that's, that's what it opened up for me, a whole, you know, very uh, beautiful, magical, powerful journey for over 10 years. Um, and, and during that period is where I started after I learnt, um, after I studied for a couple of years and then I studied medieval astrology, um, all that sort of stuff. Kept on learning, kept on studying, um, started doing my reading, started teaching and things like that. Anyway, gone off track there a little bit, but then again, not really, because I'm just trying to show you an example of when you go into a Jupiter period, when you are a night birth at 20 years of age, depending on what Jupiter is doing in your chart, it's going to describe a lot about what's going on in your life. And that's what we're looking at when we're looking at these Fedoria periods. We're actually assessing, you know, life cycles, life periods, and what they describe during those years, right? And as I said at the beginning of the video, it's not just about looking at the Fedaria period. It's about looking at all these other different things that are going on in the birth chart at the same time. 
but this is just one technique that I wanted to um, just introduce to you guys and to share with you. And um, yeah, if it inspires you to, to explore it and look further, you know, please do. Um, and as I said, I do it, uh, I use it as, as uh, part of my, my little astro toolkit <laughs> when I'm doing a reading and things like that. Um, so, you know, look, here's my book. I've had this for about 14 years. This is uh, my, my little <laughs> study book that I got when I studied with Bernadette Brady. Um, it's a great book, actually. She's, she's pretty much compiled and put it together herself. There's some really great, um, uh, well, predictive techniques, um, all based on medieval astrology, but with some uh, really great examples of famous people's charts and just showing how these techniques actually work. So what I might do is do another video um, and I might do it during the day because this screen looks very dark to me. It is a bit dark in here, but anyway, um, it's okay. Hopefully it's good enough to, hopefully the audio is, is good quality. That's the main thing. And obviously um, the, the Fedaria period uh, charts that I just showed you, you would have been able to see them. They looked very clear to me anyway. So um, yeah, I'll leave it there guys and just have a little think about that. And I look, I don't know how you can access creating a, a Fedaria chart online or um, planetary Fedaria periods. There, there probably is some, some website or I don't know, something that offers it. I use Solifier, so Solifier has that facility, that function. Um, yeah, I mean, look, you can always hit me up for, you know, um, giving you a reading just on your Fedaria period. So, you know, there's something to think about. Um, and, yeah, leave it there. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate all my subscribers and all the new ones that are coming on board. Um, love and blessings. Thank you all so much. See you soon with part two. And I really want to do Chiron in Aries. So, yeah, look forward to that. See you soon. Bye.